I don't know. That's my favorite one. All right, so talking about this, what surprised each of you about this stage of life, good and bad? Were there physical things, mental things, career things, big surprises? Do you want to start, Gloria? I'm going to, she's shaking her head down there. I, I, I spoke first. No, I'm always going to uh, have to No, say. no, no, you don't have to. No, let's change the order. All right, change the order. Whoever wants to jump in. <laughs> uh, see? The su surprised as a different... I don't know. Even stages for me, it's difficult. I mean, I don't see stages in age. Um, when I look back and try to remember what period in my life it was, I have a picture of my children. Then I say, oh, they were three years old. It must have been that then. I was that age. Or oh, what dog I had. Dog <laughs> create very much <laughs> the decades of macaroni, of Ziggy, or, you know, all the dogs. So I, don't, I can't say that it was a phase 30, 40. I think um, having children finishing school and going to college was a, a, a big moment. One of them is still at home, but he's 16, so it's almost there. Um, uh, another big change for me was the end of my modeling career, which came, I would say, within a couple of years. You know, I was working, working, working very, very much, always having a schedule. I knew exactly what I was going to do in the following eight, seven, eight months. And then little by little, you know, it became very sporadic. I was working two days in a week yeah, until, until it dwindled to nothing. And that was really hard because I was so, you know, how do I occupy my time? So I would say the end of modeling and children leaving school for me were the, the, the hardest moment. And when was that? When did you? Um, modeling started to end for me uh, around 42, 43, I'm 57 now. And my children, though I have still one who is at home, but I said he's it's almost an adult, so it's coming. Um, I have a 25-year-old daughter that left uh, uh, six or seven years ago, and then my son, who's almost at home, I would say, just almost. <laughs> All right, whoever wants to jump in next. I'll jump in. I, um, I mean, just physically, um, it took me a while to just get used to who I am right now. And um, when my son was born, I nursed him for, I don't know, three years or something. You know, people were wondering whether he'd, you know, be in high school and still nurse him. <laughs> Turns out that's not really true. Um, but in the process, you know, I mean, your body just completely changes. And I never really adjusted to that. I just couldn't, you know, couldn't bear to look. Uh, and now it's just, it's what it is. And, um, and I'm fine with that. And then I think I started, I... I, in the last couple of years, I have been willing to take more risks than ever before without wondering what the consequences would be and, you know, what I would do next or what anyone would say. And, um, you know, and then it turns out the consequences mostly are not so bad. And the risks seemed really huge at one point, but now maybe not, not so huge. And it makes me want to take, uh, take more. Um, and that's been... I always took risks for my son and encouraged him to do that, but I never really thought about it uh, for myself. And as my good friend Patricia, who's here, knows, I mean, it did take me 18 years to get a divorce, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was a change. <laughs> well, maybe it's a good thing I didn't go first. <laughs> Because I think the, the biggest surprise and I think the most difficult and perhaps impossible to explain to anybody who hasn't gone through it is that sex, you're not obsessed with sex anymore. <laughs> and not to experience that as a loss. It's not a loss. It's not better or worse. It's just different. And I, I, I look at, at uh, young couples in the street and, and I, I feel like the king and I, what's that song? Oh, hello, young lovers. You know, I think, oh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and thank God I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't know how to express it because there's no way that anybody could have told me in my younger years that this was not a loss and it's not. It's, it's, it's exactly as wonderful, but in a different way. It's like all those brain cells that could reliably be depended upon. You turned around in your head, and there was a sexual obsession right there waiting for you, you know, uh, are, can now, are now free to be devoted to other things. 
<laughs> so good to know. <laughs> It'll be great, trust me. That's one surprise. And the other surprise is that people keep saying things like that have the word still. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. oh, you're still doing this. You know, you're still running around. You're still... As if I was going to retire from what? What, from life? Would I retire from life? I, I, you know, it's shocking to me because I'd never had a real job, so I didn't get into the, the pattern of work, you know, so I wasn't thinking about retirement anyway. But, um, so it comes as a bigger shock to me that people keep saying, oh, you're still doing it. <laughs> and I, you know, it actually makes me angry, you know. <laughs> anyway, those are the two biggest surprises, I think. I, I sometimes say about me the still beautiful Isabella Rossellini in magazines. We, we catch so I always that. never know if it's a, <laughs> it's a double-edged compliment. <laughs> and one day I was complaining to an Italian film director who is in his late 80s, and he said, oh, lucky you, they say about me the still lucid. <laughs> <laughs> so that cured me. <laughs> Well, mine is sort of grim. Um, I think the biggest surprise was getting fired. <laughs> uh, I think um, I, uh, it's right up there in all the trauma books, <laughs> uh, along with uh, a death or a disease or moving or getting divorced. Getting fired is a really big deal. And uh, it happens to a lot of people more and more these days. And. Uh, I find that people don't talk about it. Um, if I, it's like age, you know, if you say your age first, then other people say me too, and if you say you were fired. But I was fired just as this stage of life uh, was beginning for me. I was, I think, um, 52 or three. And um, it was devastating, because I realized that so much of my identity was in my professional achievement. And without that, um, I, I didn't know who I was. I mean, I had a whole life, but I, I didn't have a definition. And it felt like such an enormous rejection. Uh, uh, you know, how could you go out and sell yourself again when you were been so uh, totally rejected? Uh, but like very many people who've been fired, <laughs> Um, it turned out to be the best thing that ever happened to me because it forced me to make change. And I realized that I am very averse to change and I will stay anywhere <laughs> uh, if they'll keep me. <laughs> um, and, and to be th thrown off the cliff like that uh, was, it turned out, totally liberating and really launched me into this much happier and much more confident and productive stage of my life. I think it's helpful, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I got fired and it got rid of the good girl. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a good girl, that's all. Just be good, just be good, just be good. So it was, it was now I don't care. <laughs> I brought, a, I found my inner bad girl and I'm much happier. 